Uh, Nick, what's up, man? Shoot, dog, you guys can hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we can. We've just been talking um, uh, kudzu, so. Cool. Um, yeah, internet connection is a little funky here. So just finished up giving the second of two helium presentations to paragliders here in uh, Monroe, Utah. There's a, a week here called the fly-in. So paragliders from all over the country, all over the world are coming in to fly in this area. It's a, some really good paragliding. And then at the end of the week, starting tomorrow, Thursday through Saturday, there's a, a race called a hike and fly race. And we'll be tracking paragliders with helium. So that's the cool thing is I put up a couple different hotspots, Atomic Blood Wolverine and Fierce Honey Badger are up in the, uh, in the Severe Valley in Utah. And we've been tracking paragliders for uh, a couple days now. In fact, um, we've been using Lone Star tracking. So using little oysters, um, these guys right here. And Lone Star is doing all the tracking stuff for it. Um, we're seeing some stuff that has blown my mind as far as the, the distance that these trackers are being picked up at. The furthest distance we've seen so far from a sensor, not a gateway to a gateway, but sensor to gateway is 82 miles. So 82 miles, of course, we got clear line of sight. Some of these guys are going up to uh, just under 18,000 feet. So we got an advantage there, but um, seeing some really interesting stuff and, and uh, yeah, some rad, rad, rad things going on here in Utah. Hopefully most of that came through okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that all came through. That's fantastic, man. Um, you know, I, I, I'm very, very happy to see some of the real-time um, data that's coming through um, the project that you're working on here. Um, it, it, it looks fantastic uh, from this end, man. Yeah, I think, I, let's see if I can share the screen and show you guys what is actually happening. Um, so you should be able to see this stuff. So yeah. this is the, this is my kind of Lone Star account. So you can see where all the trackers currently are. Um, guys are actually getting ready to fly right now. So I've got a couple trackers that are, are going to go live as far as moving around pretty soon. Um, and then Lone Star has also set up this pretty cool live tracking stuff for the event where you can see um, what's happening here as well. So we got a couple different trackers here. We got all these guys here. I've been labeling the names so that the paragliders can look and see where everybody is. And that's one of the things I'm going to be testing in the race tomorrow is that we already have kind of live tracking set up, but this is a, a pretty cool backup. Um, and this all got started off when a paraglider, paraglider went missing last year in Nevada. So this is kind of full circle to see if we can track everybody this year. Um, I got a couple pictures. This one is up at 11,200 feet on uh, Monroe Peak. So this is one of my little off-grid setups. Um, I've had this set up in other places, but well, HN10 on top of this. So I wanted one of the things I wanted to show is that you don't need a high gain antenna to go far distances. This uh, antenna here has tracked these sensors out from 30 miles away. Um, and it's definitely making connections to the other antenna, which or the other hotspot, which is uh, this one is Fierce Honey Badger. And this is over on what's called Cove Launch. So these are the two deployments I got up. Um, they're both on three DBI antennas and they're tracking stuff 30 to 60 miles away. Some of the funny stuff we're seeing is that there are hotspots both uh, far north and far south of this severe valley, which is the valley that you can see in the background um, that are also kind of picking up these paragliders because the paragliders are, are so high above the, above the ground. So kind of cool stuff that we're seeing here. Nick, what are you using for your backhaul on your hotspots? Uh, backhaul and hotspots is the standard cell backhaul. I think one of them is running on a RUT240, and the SIM plan is with the Livia Wireless. These are both, I think these are both DIYs, um, so I'm able to separate out the packet forwarder. So the mining is being done in the cloud. Um, I know that's unusual, but that's, I just got lucky with DIYs a long time ago. And, and, <laughs> and, um, and yeah, in fact, one of these wow. might have come from one of my buddies. We both got DIY codes at the same time. As, as, unbelievable as this sounds he's just like no i'm not going to do this project so you, do you want this thing i was like yeah i'll take a diy code and so now i've got these these two of them up there um and so I got, one is a rut 240 the other one might be on an ibr 250 cradle point um, on the same olivia plan so for these we can use really low data that's like less than 100 megs a month where the standard kind of full fat miners those are running at uh what is it 100 gigs a month is what i'm yeah. seeing on some of, the, some of my clients so very very different kind of use cases but it's like one of those things, if you got the ability, you might as well deploy it and, and put the thing into use. And Nick, you put uh, full write-ups on, on builds, build-outs on these guys, right? Um, on your site? Yep, all this stuff is on Gristle King. I try and make sure that yeah. everything I do is, is not, not secret so that we can all learn from it. Um, some cool things that I've actually picked up on these two builds. I don't, I'm not sure if you can see it in the other one, but on this one, you can see that the, um, every, every cell modem that I've got comes with two antennas. It comes with a main and a diversity. And for a while, I was trying to put the main antenna, which in this case is this guy up here, up on the top uh, top left. 
I was trying to put those up high to give them a better clear line of sight. But what I'm finding is it doesn't really matter. I don't know if you can see it on this one. Um, if you zoom in, you can. I don't know if you can see me zooming in, but basically both antennas are in more or less the same place. They're just in different orientations. So one's vertical, one's horizontal. And that appears to be working just as well as trying to get those antennas up high. So just making the build simpler and simpler. You're seeing on, on this one, um, again, there's no vents on the side of this thing. Um, I wanted to see if, if we needed to vent that or not. I know Travis has run these things without vents through the middle of the Texas summer. So I wanted to be like Travis, check that out and uh, see, if that thing, see if that thing works. And so far it's working great. We had a little bit of rain and I think snow up here yesterday. So um, hopefully they're, they're still uh, up and running, but you can look at Atomic Blood Wolverine and Fierce Honey Badger and, and see that they should be up and good to go. Awesome. Very cool to see. Very cool to see. Cool. That's, that's my news from Utah. Well, man, it sounds like the event is going well. And, um, you know, I, I, I wish safety and, you know, um, you know, health on all you guys. Um, uh, it, you look a little beat. I know you've been uh, definitely been working, working this hard to get um, everything set up. But um, yeah, I guess the event starts tomorrow or the official race. The race starts tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you can look for me. I should be right near the end of the pack. All these guys are actually good pilots. And I'm just a, a hack <laughs> going along with it. So it'll be, be fun to participate in. Um, first one of these things that I've done. So it'll be super exciting as well. Very cool. And we have links here. Um, uh, so everyone can uh, follow this. Yep. Uh, let me see if I can drop that, um, that one link in the chat. Hang on a second. Perfect, man. Yeah, this is this is something cool that um, Lone Star. Oh, this one. Let's see, let me paste. Set up just for just for this. I think this link only lasts for about a month. So if you're watching this video in 2023, the link won't work. But um, yeah, through the end of the month, this link should work. And and part of this was just showing paragliding clubs everywhere that this is a, a cool potential for them to do. Um, and if wherever you are in the world, if there's a paragliding club near you, is reach out to them. A lot of the times they don't want to deal with all the, the tech side of setting these hotspots up. And so if you're looking for a location, you might as well find a paragliding club because typically our launches are up really high and we've got really clear lines of sight to um, everything around us. Um, I'll say everything in San Diego is pretty much locked up. So stand on my head. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anywhere else in the world, uh, have at it. Talk to your local uh, free flight pilots and maybe get a, uh, maybe get a tandem ride. Hey, and Nick, um, anyone out there who is interested in developing, uh, I, I, I've got kits for them. So just um, give them a ticket or, you know, throw their name my way and I'll, I'll get that drop shipped out to them. Man. So. Cool. Uh, looks like my cool, internet man. went down, so I'm going to uh, jump right. off, but I'll pass on the offer for, uh, for kits. Adios, bud. Be safe. Oh, that's cool as hell. Uh, thanks, Nick. Uh, it's always a pleasure having you on the show and you're doing the coolest stuff on the helium network. I, I know of at least. Uh, so, uh, very, very cool, man. And I'm looking forward to, uh, watching the race, uh, you know, pan out over the next few days. So, um, uh, you folks be safe and, um, I'm definitely looking forward to it.